You may be wondering what's going on with printed farms down in Florida from our part one video a few months ago. We saw them begin construction on this building with the first few layers, watching the print process up close to see how this Kobod printer operates. Six weeks ago, I visited again to check up on their progress, and recently Frederick has sent me a bunch of footage that I'll share in this video today. Here's the much anticipated finished product. Here we have the first 3D printed structure in Florida, completed with a Cobalt Boat 2 printer and printed farms. With a smooth finish and a coat of paint, the building doesn't stand out at all from typical construction you might find in Florida. You can see before these finishings were added, the lines didn't look so great. Keep in mind, this project did not use any tent or protective covering for the printer, so it was completely exposed to the elements as it was being printed. Towards the end of this video, we'll get a look at the next print Printed Farms is working on, where they had a congressman in attendance checking out how it was going. You'll notice on that next print how much their line quality has improved. This is largely due to their use of a new extruder head that has a built-in system to smooth the concrete as it prints. Other factors like weather and experience also could have played a part in improving the print lines. Keep in mind this was the first building constructed by printed farms and they learned many lessons from which they can improve every future print. The best part is, when you see how they finished the material, it doesn't even make a difference what the printed lines look like underneath. But before we get to that, let's talk about this roof. At this point, I think everyone here knows that you can't print concrete horizontally without anything underneath to support itself. A short time before I was on site and the roof looked as pictured, it was still under construction. For this project, they opted to use insulated concrete forms. Long ribs run horizontally across the building, and then lightweight foam sections are placed in, which can then contain a final layer of concrete. Before the final pour, a few more layers are printed on using the laticrete solution. Remember that the walls were filled with vertical cells containing rebar and poured concrete. It's likely that the printed concrete alone could support the weight of the roof. However, to comply with traditional standards as closely as possible, it's very simple to fill a vertical cell and put rebar in. That way you have something that engineers can look at and easily find past precedent for, as opposed to the printed concrete portions, which currently require some unique permitting, especially if you're asking to use 3D printed concrete for structural purposes. After the final printed layers are complete, they finish the grid of insulating forms and then grid rebar above. This is a roofing and flooring hybrid solution I suspect this building is so strong that it could easily support a second floor if they decided to build one. Weather conditions in Florida can be quite harsh, so the printed farms team takes utmost precaution, choosing to over-engineer for quality's sake rather than trying to cut costs. Now on to the interior of the building. Here you can see what it looked like when I visited before they sprayed any sackcrete stucco. The ceiling has that wire mesh that's prepared to accept the stucco. The texture of that wire mesh will give a good surface for the stucco to stick to. At this stage, preparations are made for lighting fixtures and any outlets, along with switches and the garage door operator. You can see many of the electrical utilities were threaded between the wall and the roof. All of these things were obviously done with manual labor. There are many ways you can finish the concrete to make it smooth. Spraying the stucco is a very efficient method because it doesn't require manually applying the mortar from a spackle. After finishing up the roof, they start on the walls, making sure to cover any electrical utilities with a plastic bag before spraying. The process goes by fairly quickly, and in a few days they were able to complete the entire interior and exterior of the building. To pump this sacrete mixture for the stucco, they used the same M-Tech Duo mix from before. That was one of the many critical partnerships Printed Farms needed to complete this project. A little more on that from Frederick himself. Other partners I would like to mention is um, Amvic with their roof flooring system, Amdec. It's an ICF system, has been working very well. Um, 
we have been working with um, CMEX to to complete the, the slab and pouring of the ICF roof. Um, also, Sacrete has been very helpful with when it comes to the stuccoing, and we have used the Duomix Connect from MTech to spray the stucco on the walls. After the interior is complete, they move on to the exterior of the building. One person sprays holding from the nozzle, another holds the hose, and a third person smooths out the concrete behind them, with some assistance from a fourth. This process is mostly aesthetic, although it may have some weatherproofing benefits as well, especially when it comes to waterproofing. We'll see in a bit how much this optional process improves the look of the concrete by making it smooth, although I personally like the printed wall aesthetic. This is how the building looked before it was painted. If it wasn't being featured on this channel, you'd hardly be able to tell it was 3D printed except for that small gap and the rounded corners give it quite a comfortable feel. It looks nearly complete, but just wait till you see what it looks like with a fresh coat of paint and how well it fits into its environment. Here's a look at the view approaching the garage from Jim's pool and outdoor kitchen area. At the base of the building, you can still see the 3D printed outline of the foundation it sits on. That gray box you see on the exterior of the building is for the electrical facilities. And this door and window are both weatherproof. For the windows, we have used Mr. Glass doors and window. Um, it's windows made in America, made here in Florida and a partner of Printed Farms. Um, they have great hurricane resistant doors and windows and we're working closely with them to, to modify the design so it fits into our 3D printed buildings. Made here in the USA as Frederick mentioned before, the garage doors were installed and a concrete ramp was poured to make accessibility into the garage easier. As you can tell demonstrated by this tractor retreating into its new home. This is an almost complete 3D printed structure. We're going to put a truss roof on to match the existing buildings on site. It's um, built for tractors. It's an agricultural commercial building. And it has a 35 inch tie beam that you see above these roll up doors. These are Hurricane um, NOA roll up doors. We're waiting for the exterior lights. That's why you see the outlets there and um, the outside wall is 11 feet to the top service you see the side door service entrance our service electric okay you see the rounded corners and the curving into the door this allows the door maximum um, capacity to open so on the side door it, it comes out full width whereas normally on a square um, set door, your, your door is hitting the wall. So this is an aspect of the printing interior. We have turrets into the corners to keep, so we can clean the corners. And we have, of course, the roll-up doors for hurricane and industrial use. The, uh, we did the ampic roof as proof of concept. It wasn't necessary because we will do a truss roof but it has uh, 12 inch by 20 foot beams that support can easily put a second story on um, and we finished the interior with stucco as the exterior in the middle here you can see where how we printed it and how we set the electrical boxes we set the electrical boxes as we printed ran the conduit for the electrician up to the roof and this was a proof of concept for houses, but that's why we set at four feet for the industrial building, you know, to keep it out of water or any problems. And lamps, just normal lamps, run, you know, how is uh, LED lamps, and you have a tractor shed. This here is the only evidence on this building that it was 3D printed with a machine. 
Someday I'd love to see a building like this printed next to a group of people building a house with cinder blocks the traditional way to compare and contrast the construction in identical circumstances. For this project, the first 3D printed building in Florida, we used a Cobode Bode 2 printer and it has performed extremely well. Um, I want to give a special thanks to the whole Cobode team. They are really professional, dedicated and leading the way for construction 3D printing all over the world. Printed Farms has already started the next project and we're pipelining more projects. Um, we have had a huge interest in the state of Florida for construction 3D printing. We have sold the first machines. Um, we have started collaboration with University of Miami. Um, our last print, we have Congressman Brian Mast visiting us. We'd like to thank him for visiting the print. Um, the next step is to print more buildings and get the industry started. For the pump mixer of the project, we use um, Duomix Connect from uh, MTech and it has performed very well and we are happy with um, our collaboration. Here's a time lapse of the next project Printed Farms embarked on after completing the first printed building in Florida. It was much easier for them the second time around after going through some of the growing pains of being a startup working on their first big projects. This print also uses a different extruder head. Take a look at this close up where you can see the extruder is smoothing out the concrete as it prints. This could eliminate the need to stucco the building after construction. Even a local congressman had to stop by and check out the progress Printed Farms was making. This is some footage they took from their new project, all the way from leveling the build site to printer assembly. Here are those same four ton blocks we saw before, being prepared to host the pillars of the printer. This time printer assembly was a four man job. It takes a large forklift to maneuver the large metal beams for the printer. It's incredible that such large equipment assembled by hand can operate so accurately and precisely. Assembling the printer occupies the majority of the heavy lifting for the job. As I've mentioned before, it's critical at this step to get things as square as possible. Mistakes made during the assembly step can affect the quality of your print for the rest of the time the printer is at that location. And this time, Printed Farms had a big audience watching their print. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be sure to cover more Printed Farms projects in the future. Thank you.